And I'm also going to share my screen. And I just need to be mindful of people that may come in a little bit late so I can add them. Let me share my screen. Let's go to the start here. Now, every once in a while, I just need to pull up guys and see if anybody else has come in so I can add them. Uh, I don't see anybody else here. So I think we're in pretty good shape. We're recording. And let's go back to screen share. All right. So let's get started, guys. I have a lot of great information to go over. As I said, you know, the detox program is something, the 10-day detox program, which was originally a Metagenics program. We've used Metagenics for um, quite some time. Um, Metagenics was bought out by the company Amway, if you guys are familiar with Amway. And uh, that was about five or six years ago. And I've seen the, basically the quality of their supplements and, and kind of just, just support uh, go downhill. So we've switched about three or four years ago to a company called Nutridyne, which is a privately owned company. Uh, and just the support we get and just the research and support of doctors, they're, they're pharmaceutical grade supplements, they're only sold to doctors. So we're going to talk about some, some of the supplements that we use for detox. But again, this is something that I've been doing for probably eight, nine, 10 years. Um, and I, I really believe strongly, I, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, uh, I'm a very clean, organized person, maybe to a fault. Uh, when, my, when there's dirty dishes in the sink, I get a little bit uh, of anxiety. Uh, I see all the little uh, dust balls on the windowsills and in the corner of the house. Uh, and those things tend to annoy me. So I'm very particular also about my body. I think, you know, it's important to understand just like we would do a thorough cleaning of our house a couple times a year, we even call it a spring cleaning. We need to think of the same concept and apply it to our bodies. And certainly our bodies are just as important, if not more important than our homes, because we live inside our bodies, uh, just like we live inside our homes. So we want to keep those clean. So I do a 10-day detox, as I was saying earlier, uh, strategically at two times per year. I do right after the summer. So I always set it the Monday after Labor Day. And then I also do it the Monday after New Year's. So I know that those two Mondays, I'm going to start a 10-day detox to really clean myself out. Okay? So I'm still adding some people that are coming in. The first thing, and this is a question that we ask all of our new patients, guys, I think a good barometer of your overall health is your energy level. And I would say if you looked up energy in the dictionary, it's defined as the ability to do work. So I get a lot of work done. I have two businesses. I have two children. I've been married 28 years. I've got a lot on my plate every single week. And I don't shy away from those responsibilities. I lean into them. But I know for myself personally that I would never be able to get all this done if I didn't have great energy. I wake up at 4.35 every morning, a.m., uh, I generally have an, what I call my hour of power session, which includes meditation, uh, prayer, reading, uh, just getting prepared for my day. Uh, and that's in addition to the things that I do on a regular basis, like meal prep, taking my supplements, uh, exercise, uh, as I said, you know, other things. But my hour of power is really kind of my mental focus. And I think that that's a big, um, big player for me in terms of you know, keeping up with my energy and, and tapping into where am I? How am I feeling? Am I getting enough sleep? Am I recovered? Um, and I don't think pe mo most people are really tapping into their energy level and how they feel. But one of the questions I ask new patients, I always ask them on a scale of one to 10, if one is your dragging butt all the time, you have to hit the snooze alarm five, six times. Uh, and 10 is that you have so much energy that you wish you could bottle it and sell it. Where do you think you are on a normal day, on an average day? And I'm very surprised, but most people, their energy level is generally somewhere between three and seven. Um, and obviously, there's some people, obviously, if they're coming to see me, um, their energy level is probably not good because they have some sort of a health crisis. Let me just admit this person. Uh, but I think energy is a very good barometer of overall health. So I would just ask you guys to rate your energy, not your best day, not your worst day, but an average day. Where, where would you put your energy level? And I would bet that that is synonymous with how productive you are in your life. And I can tell you without question that the times that my energy is the best during the year is right after I finish the detox. Generally the first two days of detox, and this is how I know my body's detoxing, generally the second and third day of the detox when my body is shedding these toxins, um, I definitely feel a, 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 a suppression in my energy. But by the time I'm done the detox, my energy is through the roof. And I have pretty good energy to begin with. One of the things I ask patients to do, both my new patients and people that are starting the detox, and I do this for myself as well, is to fill out something called an MSQ. 
And an MSQ is what we call a, a, a questionnaire that addresses what we call symptomatic load. What are the different organ systems? If you're looking at this picture here, you see there's digestive symptoms and symptoms that are related to emotional stress, your energy level, your eyes, uh, your mouth and, throat, mouth, uh, mouth and throat, your lungs, your joints and muscles, uh, even you know, things like your skin. And I think skin is a really good barometer for how toxic we are. You know, when you think about the skin, guys, the skin is contiguous with our digestive tract, okay? They're both exposed to the external environment. And so our digestive tract is just a continuation of our skin all the way down into our small intestine, large intestine. So when you think about it from that perspective, our digestive system is really exposed to so many different type of toxins. And I'm sure at this point in your lives, you've heard of a term called leaky gut. And I think leaky gut is something that's really rampant in our country. I've seen it in 31 years I've been in practice. I've seen so many autoimmune conditions, you know, things like rheumatoid arthritis, things like MS, and even things that, you know, I didn't see a lot when I first got in practice. You know, th these would be things like Alzheimer's disease. So, so much, I believe, of toxicity is related to the fact that our gut is becoming toxic. And we'll talk about th that in just a little bit, okay? But we have basically five main systems. And what we're going to do, guys, in the, in the webinar is we're going to cover the why, the what, and the how. So why is it important to detoxify? What do we need to do to detoxify? And how do you do the program, right? So part of the why is what, where does detoxification come from in the body? Well, we already mentioned the skin as being a barrier to, to, to toxins getting into our body, but also the lungs. We know that we breathe in oxygen and breathe uh, out CO2 carbon dioxide, which is a toxin. Uh, also our lymphatic system. And think of your lymph system, guys, as your sewage system. Just like you have a plumbing and a septic system in your home, we have the same thing in our body and that's called our lymphatic system. We also have our colon that we just mentioned and our colon, we'll talk about in just a second, is a major, major player in detoxification. We have our liver. And here's another thing that I've seen in the 30 years I've, I've been in practice really, really increase. And that is fatty liver disease, okay? I see patients coming in now very commonly with elevated liver enzymes. And we are developing so much toxins. And remember the toxins are stored in adipose tissue. The body likes to wall off these toxins. So one place that it likes to store toxins is in what we call our VAT. Not our fat, but our VAT. VAT stands for visceral adipose tissue. It's the deep fat in, our, in and around our organs. And so that fat infiltrates things like our liver. And that leads to fatty liver disease where the liver doesn't function. And what's the main job of the li liver? Just like your bowels are filtering what you take in and ingest, your liver is detoxifying everything that runs through your bloodstream. So all of your blood runs through that liver and your liver acts as a filter to not only pull out the toxins, but to process them and get rid of them. And that's why a major, major focus of this detoxification is getting your liver healthy. And one way to know your liver is healthy or not is by really taking a look at your liver enzymes, okay? And then obviously we know we excrete uric acid and urea through, through our kidneys, and that's why water is so important. So what are the common things we need to detox from? Well, first of all, we have internal toxins. So estrogen left uh, bro uh, on, when, it, when it's not broken down actually becomes a toxin in the body. We have other toxins like parasites and yeast that accumulate in our digestive system. One thing that I've seen a lot uh, as well is Elemental um, uh, toxins like mercury and heavy metals, uh, a lot of people, that, because they don't have the testing, they don't know that they have heavy metal toxicity, and that has become a big player in autoimmune disease. And then we have synthetic tox toxins like the toxins that we're exposed to in past pesticides. We've all heard probably of Roundup and glyphosate. Uh, these are very, very strong toxins that are um, very toxic to our nervous system, plastics, plastics and phthalates. So we want to be able to leach and get those, those toxins out of our system as we accumulate them. Now, we also have toxins that come from our food, right? All of the additives in the food, um, so many people, like my wife, is very, very gluten sensitive. And gluten is the protein portion of wheat. And that causes a damage in your gut as well. So again, have you? my wife and I have both been tested for gluten sensitivity. I don't have it, but my wife does. My wife is also very sensitive to eggs. Uh, so we've been tested for different allergens, and I think that's good to understand what those allergens are so you can get those out of your diet. And then we have things that hopefully you guys are staying away from, like high fructose corn syrup, uh, refined flour, you know, sugar, all of the, the coloring and things that are in our food. 
And then finally, uh, mold dust po uh, pollen. My son just sent me a, you know, he's, he sent me a picture. He's down in chiropractic college in Atlanta. He sent me a picture of his air conditioning vent. And there was mold all around the vent. <laughs> and he said, dad, do you think this is a problem? I'm like, well, Shane, yeah, I think it's a problem, buddy. You're breathing in that mold and you need to get that remediated immediately. So things even like mold can be very toxic to the body. So what are some of the ways that you know you're toxic? Well, first of all, if you have an autoimmune disease like MS, like rheumatoid arthritis, like a neurodegenerative condition, the, the, the conditions that are I see most in, in my practice, I would call chronic conditions. Of course, I see acute trauma, people that come in, they have a herniated disc or they pull their back out, but I see a lot of chronic disease, okay? A lot of autoimmune disease, things like IBS, right? In irritable bowel um, uh, disease. But other things like mental fog, learning disabilities, okay? Asthma, skin disorders, you know, things like ez eczema, psoriasis, uh, arthritis, you know, uh, inflammation in your joints, rheumatoid or osteoarthritis. And then other things like fatigue. And we talked about that with your energy level. And I also think your mood has a lot to do it, with it. Uh, depression, I think, is a major sign of toxicity in the brain. Um, so these are things that I would say if you suffer from one or more of these, this program is really going to be something that's going to be helpful for you. Okay. So some of the symptoms we talked about, that's why it's so important to fill out that medical symptom questionnaire. And I always tell people, if your MSQ, when you fill it out, is over 50, there's a really good chance that you have toxicity in the body. And again, I always talk about the law of cause and effect with my patients. And you guys know it. You learned it in, in science class, Newton's second law of physics. For every action, there's an equal and opposite what? There's an equal and opposite reaction. Well, our healthcare delivery system, when you go to the doctor, is focused on the reactionary side of the equation. But every symptom that a patient suffer, suffers from has its root cause in a physiological or functional prob problem. So if somebody's fatigued, there's a reason they're fatigued. And better we get to the underlying cause of the problem than just keep throwing medications at the symptoms themselves. We could say that about sleep. We could say that about GERD. We could say that about allergies. We could say that about psoriasis with the creams that we put on. Most of the solutions are outside in solutions. And I'm very much focused on inside out solutions. Let's find out and figure out the underlying cause, which may mean some additional testing seeing other doctors uh, that are not just gonna be, you know, knee jerk reaction, here's the med, go take this, and hopefully you feel better, okay? We also look at um, lab work. In my practice, a big one is C-reactive protein, which measures uh, um, inflammation in the body, liver enzymes, like we talked about. And you can even have a whole detox uh, panel done on your gut to see if you have leaky gut, to see if you're leaching these proteins through your gut that should be eliminated through your stool, okay? So again, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this guys, but two main organs we focus on in this program is the liver and the gut. And so remember your liver is filter filtering two quarts of blood every single minute, two quarts, okay? And it's removing a uh, uh, toxic substance through a two phase process. Phase one, these toxins are, are packaged and th this is called methylation. And phase two, then the toxins are eliminated, okay? This is our, our digestive tract guys, it's 34 feet. If you took the bow and you spread it out, the surface area of the bow, bow is about the size of a tennis court. So think about a tennis court. That's how much surface area you have in your gut. And it's amazing when I take people's x-rays, guys, we can see all of this stuff just laying in their bowel. Their bowels descended. We see gas and just garbage laying in their bowel. And one of the things I want you to know that 60, 70% of your lymphatic tissue, your white blood cells are, are in and around the gut. So, and it makes sense, guys, right? If we're going to take in substances that are toxic, we need an immune system or a defense system in and around our gut to immediately uh, take care of any pathogens or toxic, toxic sub substances. Um, we talked about leaky gut, and I'm going to show you this slide. It's very interesting, but this is basically what happens with leaky gut. When you ingest something, a lot of that, uh, a lot of the nutrients, water, uh, all the nutrients, protein, carbohydrates, glucose is absorbed in the gut. And you have about a one cell layer between the blood vessels and the gut barrier, okay? And what happens is you can get damage in what's called the tight junctions. So think of your gut like a colander, okay? We want nutrients to pass into the bloodstream, but we don't want large molecules like large proteins or toxins or microorganisms or parasites or yeast. We don't want that getting through the colander. And basically what leaky gut is, the analogy I use, it's like punching holes into your colander right, where you're trying to, to strain out the, the uh, broccoli, right, 
uh, but the broccoli's falling through and it's not broccoli, right? It's probably trying to strain out the uh, gluten and the sugar and all the things that people are eating. And that stuff is just passing right through into the bloodstream. And then what haps happens is the body recognizes that as foreign tissue, as foreign cells, foreign proteins, it shouldn't be there. And it starts to attack its own tissue. And then any uh, system that has a lot of blood flow, like your gut, like your joints, like your brain, these toxins are going to make their way to those tissue. Okay. So what are the four R's of detoxification that we're going to talk about? We're going to be talking about removing toxins. Okay. We're going to be talking about repairing your gut lining. We're going to be talking about replacing those toxins with good, healthy nutrients. That's going to further accelerate the detoxification process. And then we're going to talk about rebalancing. Like what do you do after the 10 day detox? And I'll talk about what I do on a regular basis, just to try to keep my body balanced. All right. Some of the uh, um, gut healing foods that I want you guys to really uh, incorporate into your detox. A big one is bone broth. I make my own bone broth. I get organic bones at the local butcher. I make a bone broth and I do this in a crock pot. It takes me about 24 hours. I add some nice spices. I add the bones. I add water and I make myself a nice bone broth. You can now buy bone broth pretty readily as well. Fermented uh, veggies, okay? Fermented veg veggies have a lot of good probiotics. So things like sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha, these are great products because they help to uh, seed the, the bowel with good, healthy probiotics. Coconut products, fermented dairy like kefir, right? Steamed veggies. We're going to introduce a lot of veggies because those green veggies, guys, are so important for detoxification. And then you know, if you are going to incorporate uh, protein, which I do eat meat, I'm not vegetarian. You just want to make sure that your meats are coming from organic so sources. All right. And then we also want to make sure that we have a good high quality uh, probiotic, right? There's strain diversity, right? It's sustainable. My probiotics, when they come to my office, they get packed in an ice chest. Okay. And they immediately go from the ice chest right into my refrigerator. These are live organisms. So it's very important when you're dealing with things like omega-3s, uh, probiotics. These things really need to come from good quality sources. Okay. These are just some of the beneficial probiotic strains, guys. Um, and the strain that the uh, uh, supplement I'm going to talk about, which is Ultrabiotic da Daily, has some of these probiotic strains in there. And I like to cycle my probiotics. So I don't take the same probiotic every month. I cycle between two different probiotics that have different strains of these probiotic uh, beneficial bacteria. The other thing I think is extremely important, and this is a product I've been taking for years. I take it every single day. I take this product and I also take this product and I do a scoop of each and I blend it up and I drink it every single morning. One is called colonics and the colonics is a prebiotic. So uh, I like to explain the, the prebiotics is like weed and seed for the probiotic. In nature, what are bacteria's job in nature? They are natural decomposers, right? So one of the things that bacteria live on, they live on fiber, right? And the average person is supposed to get 30 to 50 grams of fiber per day. And the average citizen in the US is getting about 10 grams of fiber. So we are not getting enough fiber to sustain healthy probiotic proliferation in our gut. So you wanna take these prebiotics, which are gonna have um, not only fiber in them and not just insoluble fiber like psyllium, they're gonna have soluble fiber like apple pectin and vegetables and things like that. And also they're gonna have things that help to support healthy gut, gut function. So if I look at my, my colonics, it has not only psyllium, but it has flax seeds, it has fennel, it has grapefruit pectin, it has slippery elm bark, it has rhubarb, it has uh, peppermint leaf, it has aloe, it has uh, licorice root. All of these things are very healing to the gut. And I tell you, this product has really, I believe been a big player for me and what keeps my gut microbiome healthy on a regular basis. Not to mention that the, the colonics, in one scoop of uh, colonics, there's eight grams of dietary fiber, okay? Eight grams in one serving of the colonics. Now let's talk about your diet. The solution to pollution is dilution. And we know that, right guys? That we need to dilute these toxins out of the system. So the solution to a toxic body is we've got to dilute and get these toxins out of the system. We also want to manage glycemic index. And, and you guys may know that glycemic index basically stands for how rapidly a food converts to glucose when it enters our body. So for example, flour, white flour, white sugar, uh, beer, they all have a glycemic index of 100. You eat these foods, they rapidly turn to sugar. Your body releases mass amounts of insulin. And what do we store sugar as in the body? 
We store that as fat. Fat stored in the gut is called visceral adipose tissue. That tissue is very, very highly inflammable. It produces a lot of inflammatory chemicals like cytokines. Okay. We also want to exclude things. We'll talk about the five anti-nutrients and of course, genetically modified organisms or GMOs. So, you know, uh, there's a lot of backlash about soy, especially with women, but I would say soy mainly is a GMO product. Soy in its natural state is not bad for you, but most soy, I would say 90 to 95% of the soy that I see is genetically modified. So it's not the same as a naturally occurring product. The other foods that you want to include are things like alkaline, your veggies, right? High fiber, like we talked about, nutrient dense. Kale is very nutrient dense, okay? Uh, you know, mashed potatoes aren't very nutrient dense. Uh, we also want to get healthy fats. So important to get healthy fats in our diet. Things like avocado, coconut oil. We want to get high fiber carbs. I always say I'm a common sense person, but what did God intend for us to eat? And what did God put on the earth in terms of good quality carbohydrates? Well, I don't, I don't know where the bread tree is, okay? I've never seen pasta come from plants, okay? Uh, I've never seen a white flour uh, that you scoop from the soil. No, that's refined, right? So we want to eat high fiber. God put fruits and vegetables on the earth, and that's what God intended us to eat, fruits and vegetables. And by the way, you know, you could go the rest of your life eating fruits and vegetables and do just fine and get all of the refined carbs out of your diet, the breads, the pastas, the cereals, even if you think they're high fiber and good for you, you would do fine with getting that stuff out of your diet. And of course, lean proteins. So knowing what to eat, we'll talk about reading a food label in just a second. Understanding water, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but you should be getting half of your body weight in ounces of water a day. So this is something I carry with me all the time. I either have my uh, uh, stainless steel bottle or I have a water bottle with me at all times. I weigh 175 pounds. It's very easy, guys, for me to, to get 85 ounces, 80 ounces of water a day when I'm drinking all the time. I start off with a glass of water. I have a bought, bought, uh, uh, glass of water I take up on my nightstand that I drink throughout the night. Do I pee a lot? Yeah, I pee a lot, okay? But I'm constantly drinking water when I'm in my car, when I'm with patients, constantly have a water bottle. And I think the concept here is out of sight, out of mind. If you don't have a water bottle with you, your water bottle should be like your underwear. It's just on you all the time so that you're constantly drinking. So healthy cells are like grapes. They're not like raisins. Unhealthy cells are raisins. Raisin is a grape. It's just a dehydrated uh, uh, grape, right? So a raisin is a dehydrated grape. And think about your skin. What do you want your skin? How can I always tell somebody's had a hard life or they've been a smoker or they've been toxic or they did a lot of drugs? You can see it in their skin because their skin doesn't have that good turgor pressure in it where the water has been sucked out of the cells. So water is extremely important. It's not just how much water you drink. It's how much water you're keeping in your cells. Every cell in our body has a layer of fat around it. It's called a phospholipid layer that helps to retain that water inside your cells. And if you're toxic and you're, your cell membranes are trashed, you're going to leach a lot of that water right out of your cells. So we talked about this. I, I'm not a big fan of distilled water. I like nice uh, mineral water. Um, you wanna make sure you're avoiding plastics, right? Containers that contain BPAs. Uh, really avoid those. That's why I'm a big fan of stainless steel containers. Um, and we talked about out of sight, out of mind. Now, these are, these are obvious guys. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these, but these are what, what I call the five anti-nutrients. Not only are you going to stay away from these on your 10-day detox, you should stay away from these all the time. High fructose corn syrup and refined sugar. You shouldn't have white table sugar in your house, okay? If you came to my house and you had a cup of coffee, you'd be sorely uh, upset because I don't have sugar in my house. Maybe I have a little bit of stevia. I don't know where it is, but that's the extent of the sweetener you're going to get in my home. Maybe a little bit of honey. Uh, GMOs, right? Remember, soy, soy, corn, wheat, they're all genetically modified, most of these crops. Uh, refined grain products like uh, glutens, we talked about that. Partially hydrogenated oils. You know, uh, these oils are changed, that they basically change the oil so that it has a longer shelf life. They're heated at high temperature and it literally changes the chemical makeup of the oil. And these uh, partially hydrogenated oils are making their way into the fatty tissue of your body. And some of the most important tissues in your body are made of fat, your nerves, your brain, okay? Your hormones, these are all things that are, that are derived from fat, okay? I'm a big fan of getting the artificial sweeteners, right? Aspartame, Splenda, sucralose is a big one, okay? Getting these things that are neurotoxins, you need to get them out of your, your diet. Uh, other things like household cleaners, 
you know, we, my wife and I, my wife uses a, a company that makes uh, how, uh, healthy natural cleaners that don't have a lot of harsh chemicals in them, right? Make sure you're not using Roundup on your, on your lawn where that has glyphosate like we talked about. And I would say if any of these uh, items are in your home or in your food, you should take them and put them back on the shelf or get rid of them, right? And turn them upside down or turn them backwards or throw them out so that nobody else is exposed to them, okay? Now, I think it's very interesting when I looked up the most seven, seven most commonly eaten foods in America, what are they? They're milk, cheese, white flour, bread, sugar, Coca-Cola, and ground beef, okay? And these are all the foods you're gonna get at McDonald's or most of your fast food restaurants including Chick-fil-A. And I know you guys love Chick-fil-A. I like it too, okay? But these are all the foods that you're gonna get when you eat out, right? And these are all foods that obviously you're gonna really avoid on the 10-day detox. We wanna make you guys think in terms of meal prep. Okay, I've, I've been prepping every single morning. I make my own breakfast, I make my own lunch. And generally my wife and I are doing leftovers for dinner. But I love to meal prep and I love to go grocery shopping. And I think a lot of this is thinking in terms of macronutrients. Food is always one of three, three things. And you need all three of these macronutrients in your diet. It's either protein, a carbohydrate, or fat. So if I told you eggs, which macronutrient is that? Well, that's kind of a trick question because the protein's in the egg white, but the fat is in the egg yolk. And, and eggs are great. I probably eat egg, eggs five out of, of seven days a week. The whole cholesterol myth, I could spend another hour on that, but that's a bunch of crap. Cholesterol in its a pure form is not dangerous. It's when that cholesterol is oxidized and hardened and turned into bad LDL cholesterol. And generally that comes from stress and from sugar, okay? So, you know, the cholesterol myth has been debunked. Cholesterol is very important to your nerves, very important to your brain, very important to your hormones, okay? You need to learn how to read food labels. When I go to the grocery store, guys, I pick up food and I read the label. I wanna know how many calories in a, are in a serving. How much carbohydrate is in there? Not only how much carbohydrate, like in this example, there's 34 grams of carbohydrate in a serving, but there's only one gram of fiber and there's 17 grams of sugar. If you have more grams of fiber or sugar than you do fiber, that's not a, a carbohydrate you should be consuming. You should be get, getting net carbohydrate per serving of 20 grams or less. So you take the total carbohydrates, you subtract the fiber, okay? And that's gonna give you the total amount of net carbohydrates. And if it's over 20, you're going to get an insulin spike and insulin converts sugar to fat. Insulin is fat fertilizer. If you want fat to go away from your belly, you have to manage your insulin levels. And the best way to do that is getting refined carbohydrates out of your diet, uh, foods that have high carbohydrate per serving, low fiber. And those are going to be your refined carbs like that come from flour and sugar. And then the other thing is to really learn to practice stress management techniques. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay. The other thing is I think people are toxic in their movements. I see so many of my patients, when we look at their movements, they have toxic movements. I see a lot of people, my, I, I, my mom fits into this category. Many people I know are what I call tofi, thin on the outside, but fat on the inside. So just because you have a good BMI and you're, you, you, know, you look good when you put your clothes on, it doesn't mean that you're not fat on the inside and you have this visceral fat. And what I say, we wanna be modi, okay? Muscular on the outside, but thin on the inside, okay? And I love this quote here, guys. I really want you to think about this, but it says the body rapidly maladapts to insufficient physical activity. And if continue results in substantial decrease in both total and quality of years of life, right? Total years of life and quality years of life. So taken together, conclusive evidence exists that physical inactivity is one of the most important causes of most chronic disease. And in addition, physical activity prevents or delays chronic disease, implying that chronic disease disease need not be an inevitable, inevitable outcome during life. And basically guys, we want our health span and our lifespan to be the same. I always say your life should be like a candle. A candle burns with the same intensity and then it flickers a couple of times at the bottom of the wax and it goes out. And I see so many people in this country, they get to their fifties and sixties and their quality of life really starts to go down. The things that they enjoy doing, the things that they want to do, like travel and play with their grandkids and, and go on vacations and move and climb and do things they can't do anymore. And I think so much of this is due to physical inactivity. So I always tell people, this may be a good time when you're doing the 10-day detox to really evaluate what you're doing in terms of physical activity. Number one biomarker of aging, I see it in my practice all the time, loss of lean muscle mass. Number one biomarker of aging.
okay? So it's a good time to reflect and think about your exercise, okay? Now let's go over the program. We went over why, we went over kind of what we're gonna be doing and let's go over the how we do it. So I'll make this available. It's in the guide that I'm gonna give everybody that's doing the detox protocol, but you're gonna eliminate these foods on the left, okay? You're gonna include the foods on the right. And a lot of people think when they think detox, they think suffering. There are so many things, guys, that you can eat. I promise you, this is not a starvation diet. This is not a fast where you're just drinking water. You are going to incorporate day one. Yes, you are going to do a fast and just do liquids only. We'll talk about that in just a second. But days two through 10, you're eating real food. I just want you to eat healthy, real food. So fresh fish, chicken, turkey, right? Um, you can do herbal tea, seltzer water. You know, you can do seltzer water if you like, like it. I'd rather see you do regular water. And like I do, add some electrolytes to it to make it taste better, as long as those aren't like Gatorade, things that have high fructose corn syrup in it or have sugar in them. Uh, stevia, agave nectar, raw honey, I would encourage you to stay away from that as much as possible. But if you need to sweeten something, that's what you're going to use. Uh, you're going to stay away from gluten. You're going to go with gluten-free products, rice, buckwheat, uh, gluten-free oats, um, rice milk, almond milk, or so soy milk, because you're staying away from deal. Uh, you're staying away from dairy. We talked about water. You're going to stay away from peanut butter, one of the most toxic crops on the face of the earth. And you're going to stick with walnuts, almonds, and cashews. And then plenty, plenty of steamed veggies. Uh, we'll talk about that just in a second. One of the things I love to do on the detox program, guys, I have a, a juicer. I love to make my own green juice. These are the best detox foods. And again, I'm recording this so you can take a snapshot of it if you want with your food. But these foods are awesome for eliminating toxins from the body. Things like ginger, kale, grapefruit, beets, garlic, your cabbage family. And I love cabbage. I love coleslaw. I make my own healthy coleslaw. Um, you know, we, my wife and I basically uh, slice up our, our coleslaw. We chop it up. We use the mandolin. And my wife makes a dressing that is made with um, coconut oil and apple cider vinegar and some, uh, what else does she put in there? She puts... Uh, some spices in there as well. But this is great to incorporate. These are the, the veggies that you want to incorporate into your juicing or into the veggies that you're eating. Now, as far as the supplements, I'm going to go over those one by one and why they're important on the program. The first thing I want to go over it, on this program, you're going to be using this product. It's called Dynamic Detox. This, when we talked about phase one, phase two detoxification of the liver, this product is aimed at supporting phase one, two, at phase one and phase two detoxification of the liver, Okay. The other thing that you're going to be doing, guys, is you're going to be taking uh, detox support. Now, detox support, guys, you can read it, but it has a lot of methylated folate in it. And methylated folate is really important for that process that we talked about in your bloodstream for grabbing those toxins and getting them back to the liver uh, so they can be um, metabolized. Okay. So this also has things like pomegranate in it, um, and it's also designed to help alkalize your bloodstream. All right, so you're gonna be doing the detox support two tablets twice per day. The other product you're gonna do on the program is the Ultrabiotic Daily. And this is your refrigerated probiotic that talks about, that we talked about when we talked about the beneficial probiotic strains, okay? And then the other things that I would also consider, so you have your colonics we talked about, you have your Ultrabiotic Daily, which is your pro probiotic. You have your, and, and remember colonics is your prebiotic, colonics is your weed and seed for the Ultrabiotic Daily. You have your detox support for methylation, and you have your dynamic detox powder and shake to help support phase one, phase two detoxification in your liver. The other things I take every day and I would consider uh, omega, uh, omega threes. I take something called Omega Complete, which has a natural anti-inflammatory in it. I also take vitamin D3 with K2. The, by the way, most people don't know this. If you haven't had your vitamin D tested, you should, but the average person should be getting about 400 uh, IUs of uh, vitamin D3 for every 10 pounds of body weight. So a 100-pound person should be getting 4,000 IUs. A 200-pound person should be getting uh, 8,000 IUs. So it's titrated based on body weight. Not everybody should be taking the same amount of vitamin D. It's 400 IUs per 10 pounds of body weight. Do the math, divide your weight by 10, and then times that by 400 IUs, all right? Uh, the other thing we talked about is the GI integrity. I would highly, highly, highly recommend the GI integrity for anybody that has bowel issues. If you know you have GERD, if you know you have IBS, if you get colitis, constipation, these things related to uh, gut dysfunction, I would really uh, recommend incorporating the GI Integrity. And then another product I don't have with me, I didn't bring it from home, is something called liposomal. Liposomal means under the tongue, glutathione. And glutathione is the number one cellular antioxidant in the body. And we know antioxidants 
help to prevent rust in the body. Um, they help to prevent free radical damage of our cells. And liposomal glutathione and glutathione in general is super, super important for antioxidation in the body. Okay. The other things that I do on a regular basis that I think um, supports my body and detox, I love to take hot saunas, right, to sweat. I think sweating is a really good way to eliminate toxin. I love to do cold plunges. One of the things that I do probably three or four times a week after I take a hot shower, I'll crank that sucker all the way to cold. And I try to go 30 seconds to a minute with a cold plunge. I don't start with a cold plunge. I don't recommend doing that, especially in the winter. But if you take a nice hot shower, you can then turn that to cold. cold. That activates a part of our nervous system called your parasympathetic uh, system, which is very healing. Deep breathing. Every single morning, guys, I start off with 30 deep breaths. Inhale, hold, blow out. And I count to 30. And this is also part of my meditative process. It's very difficult if your mind is full, right? There's mindful. Most people, their mind is full of garbage, full of worry, feel full of anxiety. And for me, deep breathing is about, can I get to 30 breaths and literally stay in the moment? And it's amazing. Sometimes I get to eight, nine breaths and I know my mind is really full. And I'm like, was that eight? Was that seven? And I lose my, my, my track. And I'm like, oh, my mind is really cluttered today. I need to double down on my deep breathing. So I've learned techniques to help me get to 30 deep breaths. And 30 deep breaths take me about three to four minutes, okay? So if you can't get to three to four minutes, man, your mind is really full with a lot of worry, thought, thoughts of, of fear and guilt and things that you just need to get out of your mind, right? And then loofah scrubs. We have a nice natural loofah in the shower um, that I like to scrub down with and get those toxins and stimulate blood flow to my skin, okay? So in wrapping up, guys, there's two things that I would like you to consider doing. One is filling out your MSQ. And I always tell patients, you know, the MSQ is subjective. You certainly can lie on the MSQ and make yourself feel better, but I wouldn't suggest that you do that. I would suggest that you really take an honest inventory of what's going on in your body and take your time with this document. It's filled out according to symptoms. So for example, if you have headaches, if you never have headaches, it would be a zero. But if you occasionally had headaches and the effect is, is severe, it's gonna be a two. If you always have headaches or frequently have them and the effect is severe, you're gonna be a four. So you're going to just fill all of these symptoms out and then you're going to total that form and see, let's see what your score is. The other thing I highly recommend, and we do this on a regular basis, I do it every single month in my office, is an in-body scan. And an in-body scan is very important because it's going to tell us how much inflammatory fat you have on your body. It gives us a visceral fat score. We want to know in pounds how many pounds of visceral fat you have in your midsection. I call visceral fat killer fat, Okay killer fat. It produces 17 different pro-inflammatory cytokines. It produces estrogen. Did you ladies know that if you have a lot of visceral fat, it's increasing your risk for breast cancer? Okay. And again, there's toffee women thin on the outside, you know, uh, yeah, thin on the outside fat on the inside. Right. And so this, this, you have to know where your metabolic state is in terms of how much muscle you have on your body. Muscle is so important because it's metabolic burning machine. It burns seven times more calories at rest than body fat. And you want to know how much fat you have on your body, particularly in your midsection. Okay. So this is what the detox looks like. And I'm just going to move my tool, tool bar out of the way, guys, so you can see this. Uh, day one, immediately upon arising, you're going to drink eight ounces of prune juice. Okay. Yes. Go get yourself some fresh prune juice. Okay. Even if you get it at the grocery store, you're going to start off with eight ounces of prune, prune juice before you do anything else. Then you're going to do eight ounces of water. I would not recommend doing the colonics in the a prune juice, I've tried it, it's okay, but I would do eight ounces of prune juice, then I would immediately do eight ounces of water. I have a little blender that I use for my shakes. So I have a little blender, I fill it up with eight, 10 ounces of water. You're gonna do a half a scoop first day, half a scoop of the clonics. You're gonna blend that up, you're gonna drink it immediately. Remember, I said clonics has soluble fiber in it. If you don't do it immediately, in five minutes, you'll be eating the clonics, okay? It's gonna absorb all that water, but that's what it does in your gut. It distends that gut and takes those folds where all those toxins and poop is stuck in those folds and opens that up. Will you poop more? Yes, you will. Will you have to run to the bathroom? No, you won't. But I can guarantee you, you'll have more bowel movements and those bowel movements will probably diff be different, okay? And I always tell people, you know, one of the reasons I love colonics is I save on toilet paper. If your poop is pasty, okay, that's not good. It tells me you're not getting enough fiber in your gut, all right? You're also gonna do one of the probiotics, the ultrabiotic daily, and you're going to do two of the, the detox support capsules. So that's in, in the morning, okay? Then you're going to wait an hour. You're going to do one scoop of the dynamic detox. So there's a scooper in here. I like to do that for myself with coconut. I, I, I like a blend of coconut and almond milk. I get it at the grocery store. I get uh, organic. 
Uh, so I do eight, eight ounces of that with a little bit of ice. You can do fresh berries like blueberries, or raspberries, and then just blend that up. There's a, on the guide that we're going to give you, there's a smoothie detox recipe on page 10 of that guide. Okay. But it's simple guys, eight to 10 ounces of coconut, almond milk, or a blend, a little bit of ice, some berries, the scoop of the dy dynamic detox, blend it up real good, and then drink it. Okay. Two hours later, uh, you're going to do the first day. You're going to stick with either green juice or like I like to do is a homemade bone broth. And I just sip on that throughout the day, but no solid food during the first day of the detox. Then in the evening, you're going to repeat the process of the dynamic detox shape. You're going to do uh, one more uh, ultrabiotic daily, two more of the detox supports. And I recommend a big mug of unsweetened green tea before you go to bed. Okay. And all this is in your detox guide. Okay. Day two through 10, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, same thing you're doing. Okay. Upon arising, you're doing your prune juice, you're doing your colonics um, powder, and you're doing your ultrabiotic daily probiotic, two, two uh, capsules of the detox. Uh, and then you're incorporating your small meals throughout the day. Okay. So if you're very active, I would shoot for four meals. If you're not very active, I would shoot for three meals like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, okay? You're gonna repeat the process in the evening, the dynamic detox shake. Again, all this is in your, your guide. You're gonna do your probiotic. You're gonna do your two uh, capsules of detox support, big mug of green tea. Uh, and then you're gonna practice your, your breathing exercises. I like to do my breathing exercises a couple times a day. That why I'm detoxing my mind. So I not only do it in the morning, which I do every day, but during the detox, I like to do my 30 breaths, not only in the morning, but also in the evening to detox my mind, okay? This is a patient of ours, uh, Carrie. Uh, and Carrie went through a, what I would call, consider a metamorphosis. This is Carrie a year ago. And we put Carrie first things first on a detox program before she started eight weeks to wellness. Carrie had a lot of autoimmune issues. She had some really bad psoriasis. Uh, she had a lot of mental fog. She had problems with concentration at work. She had problems with her gut and constipation and irritable bowel. And that's Carrie a year later. Um, so I want you guys to know, look at the woman on the left and look at the woman on the right. Which one looks healthier? Which one's gonna live longer? Which one do you think feels better? If I ask the woman on the left and the woman on the right who has more energy, which one do you think has more energy? Right guys? And you know, I think this, this potential is possible for all of us, but it's gotta start with getting the toxins, toxic movements, toxic substances, toxic foods out of our lifestyle. All right. So for finishing and wrapping this up, guys, if you're interesting, interested, as I told you, I start the first Monday after Labor Day. That's going to be this coming Monday at September 12th. You don't need to start with me. You can start this program whenever you want. The reason it's 10 days, I like starting on a Monday. That gives me one weekend to do my detox. Weekends, I think, are always the hardest for people because you're going out to eat. And I just don't go out to eat that, that weekend right? Um, I don't plan a lot that weekend because I know I don't want to go out and watch other people. And by the way, I hope you guys saw that alcohol is not permitted on the 10 day detox. Okay. That's in your guide, but I just want to state that you're not doing any alcohol during that 10 days. Okay. You can start whenever you want. We could all start together. The cost is $2.99. That includes all of your supplements, includes your program guide that include, uh, includes your in-body scan and me going over it with you. So if you're interested in the detox, guys, I would highly encourage you to call the office, talk to Laurel, or talk to Jill. Let's all get started together. Uh, let's have a healthy fall, fall. As I said, you know, it's time to take the garbage out, guys. It's time to get rid of the toxins out of our, our uh, food and out of our diet and start to look good, start to feel good, right? As I'm 53 years old and there's not much that I can't do. I don't wake up in pain. I don't wake up depressed. I don't wake up with low energy. I wake up really wanting to get my day started because I'm more focused on serving other people because I know that happiness in my life comes from serving others. When I'm serving others, I'm not thinking about myself. When I'm serving others, I'm feeling good that I'm doing good for my family. I'm doing good for my patients. I'm doing good for my wife. I feel good about myself because I'm doing good, okay? It's very hard to do that if you don't have the energy and you don't have the health to give from that place. You cannot give from an empty bottle. If I wanna give you water, I can't give you it from this empty bottle. I gotta fill this bottle up. And that's when I'm going to give you something. So fill your cup back up, guys. Fill your water bottle back up, literally and figuratively. Get yourself on the detox. Reach out to the office. Let's get started on Monday. And let's make it a really healthy time. Uh, we can all suffer a little bit together. But I think you'll find if you really commit to this, and I think that's the first thing, is saying, hey, I'm going to do it. I'm going to commit to it. And then you figure out a way. Everything is in the program, guys. We'll support you. 
I'll give you guys my cell phone number. You can text me, whatever you need. I'm here to support you, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is just open up the, the uh, chat. Um, so one question is, why don't you like carbonated water? I don't like carbonated water because carbonated water is more acidic than regular water and it tends to leach calcium out of our bones. So seltzers, things like seltzers and carbonated water, if you were to take a pH strip and test water, it has a pH of about 7.2 to 7.4. The average seltzer has a pH of about five, okay? So anything acidic in the body is going to pull calcium, just like you take Tums. Why do you take Tums? It's an antacid. So our body has to use calcium in the bloodstream to buffer. It pulls that from the bones, okay? Dr. Dane, what about people with ulcerative UC? I think, Angela, you're mentioning ulcerative colitis. Uh, I know that if I get toxins out of my body, it should help me with my UC, but I'm afraid all the prune juice may aggravate it. So I would just say that's a great question, Angela. Maybe start off with two ounces of prune juice for the first day, then go three and then four. You know, prune juice is a laxative. We know that, right? So if you're afraid of it, start off with two ounces and see how your body does. Um, I always tell people, you know, you don't know until you try it, right? I like people to stick to the protocols of the program because I laid it out. Um, in such a way to really support detox. And the first thing, the prune juice is really gonna start to dump all that toxins out of your bowel. And guys, I see so much crap in people's bowels on their x-rays. I think a lot of times, you know, people aren't just, you know, they're not carrying a lot of fat in their belly. Their belly is distended, okay? Where do you buy organic meats? Uh, can you also go over how to determine how much vitamin D? Yes, I buy my organic meats. Uh, there's an organic butcher that I buy my organic meats from. Um, it's up on 263. Um, it's uh, my wife uh, and I go Shady Brook Farms. Uh, no, it's not Shady Brook. It'll come to me in a second. But if you Google organic butcher, guys, I promise you there's organic butchers in your area. There's plenty of them in this area. I like to actually go to the butcher. I go to the butcher in addition to go to, I, I shot up a lot of organic. I love uh, Freshfields. There's actually a Freshfields that's coming to Doylestown. I've been waiting for 20 years for Freshfields. Uh, or, uh, you know, a, a healthy grocery in Doylestown. Uh, and then the, the uh, formula for vitamin D is 400 IUs per 10 pounds of body weight. So if you're 100 pounds, that's 4,000 IUs. If you're 200 pounds, that's 8,000 IUs. If you're 150 pounds, that's 100, that's, uh, let's see, 6,000 IUs. Okay, so it's 400 IUs per 10 pounds of body weight. But I would highly encourage you, by the way, guys, I get my labs tested and not just basic labs, I'm talking about good labs, C-reactive protein, your ApoB cholesterol, which is your oxidized cholesterol, uh, your insulin levels. These are not general tests that most doctors are doing. You can be tested for gluten sensitivity. You can be tested for leaky gut. These are things that can be done very readily. So I'm very big fan of getting your free testosterone, your estrogen levels, your, your hormones. These should all be tested to know where you are, okay? So I'm gonna stop sharing here for just a second, guys, and we'll wrap this up. Where's my mouse? There it is. Okay, so let's see here. I think I addressed everybody's question. Um, it was a pleasure being with you guys. I, try, I was trying to keep this at 45 minutes. I went a little bit over, I apologize for that, but I hope you guys have an awesome evening and I really hope you consider doing the detox. By the way, um, reach out to the office. We have Review Wave, which is the texting system we have at the office. I sent out a text today reminding you all of the, of the webinar that we were doing today. So if you have questions, reach out through that texting service, and I promise that, that I'll get back to you. I'll see you in the office, and we can discuss it this week. All right? Have a great night, guys, and we'll see you in the office. You guys take care of yourself. And if you have any follow-up questions that you think of, guys, please reach out to me. My email is so super simple. It's drdane at 8www.com. D-R-D-A-N-E, my name at eight, the number eight, www.com. Dr. Dane at 8www.com. You can get in touch with me uh, and we will talk to you guys when we see you.